Hi everyone, it's Deb with Deb's RV Services and welcome to today's video. And today I have a special guest with us. It is Carol from RV Inspection Specialists and she is a master inspector and a certified technician. And today we're going to talk all about women in the, in the business of being a tech or an inspector. And I really wanted her to be on the show today because she has so much experience and a history with this and she's been down a, a path of having a background in the auto industry as well. So welcome to the show, Carol. And if you could just kind of introduce yourself and go through the history of how you became an inspector and a technician. Hi, everyone. So my name is Carol Jackson. I am the owner and founder of RV Inspection Specialists. Um, I started the company in November of 2015 um, out of the need to get myself out of a uh, um, um, middle of my life career. Um, and I'll explain that a little bit later, but, um, I started the company, uh, with the intent of being a RV inspector. Um, but as I started getting in and, and really building the RV inspection business, I really realized how much I missed the hands-on technical aspect of the careers I've had in my previous, um, parts of my life. So, um, I've been a technician in male dominated fields for, um, a little more than 34 years now. Uh, I started out, uh, at, in high school, um, automo in automotive technology and, um, much to my family's chagrin, um, you know, they were not, uh, they were not overly excited about that, um, but they supported me nonetheless. Um, and I, I just want to mention that that support is hugely in instrumental in the fact that I'm still here and still working in male dominated fields, because if I didn't have that support, I might not have made it all the way through tech school. Um, and so having a support group is huge. And um, I'd like to talk about that a little bit in a few minutes. But uh, so my background started in automotive right out of tech school. Um, I decided to spend my 15 plus year career in that in uh, various Ford dealerships. Um, and I had, even though I had been recruited for other industries like uh, racing and whatnot. I did not want to spend uh, my life changing tires on a racetrack. Um, I could have made a lot more money, uh, um, but uh, I, uh, I definitely wanted to spend my time in the dealership so that I could have a variety of different opportunities in front of me and learning how to do different things rather than the same thing over and over and over again monotony is not my game. I like to have variety. Um, and I like the challenge of that the variety presents. Um, so no, no two days are ever the same. Um, and so after I spent my 15 plus years in the automotive dealerships, I then decided, um, that I was kind of tired of some of the politic and things that were going on in those dealerships. And it really had worn me down. Um, because back then, women were not really accepted, um, in the men's industries, not as much as they are more accepted nowadays. Um, we still have a long way to go with that, but, um, back then it was like a huge no, no. And, oh my God, there's a girl in the shop. Like, well, who's working on my truck, you know, kind of thing. Um, and so that was, that was really difficult to navigate. Um, and, you know, I needed a change in my life. So I went to move into another passion of mine, uh, which was uh, design and remodeling. So I uh, found myself a position with a large home improvement company uh, that had uh, design build um, segment of, uh, of their operations. And so I became a designer a, um, uh, project manager. And I also helped on the day-to-day -day job site, uh, doing various construction tasks. And so I learned a lot in that about, you know, carpentry, both rough and finish. And, um, you know, so I did that for about nine years, but it wasn't, 
what I thought was a passion. It wasn't really as much of a passion as, as uh, my first career was. So um, I was a little tired of working for a large corporation and all of that politic that comes into play and the hours that they demanded and, um, you know, making money for somebody else instead of, you know, really truly making money for my, for me. So, um, I told my husband, um, that I needed to, to make another change and that I really missed being a tech. I miss the troubleshooting, the diagnostics, the getting dirty. I love getting greasy. Um, I don't know what it is. I just love it. Um, and he said, go for it. I'm with you. Whatever you want to do in your life, we'll figure it out. Um, and uh, so every morning I sat there drinking my coffee, dreaming about what my new career was going to be. And this ad comes up on my screen talking about becoming an RV inspector. And I'm like, I can do that. I've been RVing my whole life. Sure. I can fix a furnace and, you know, I've, you know, had to do this, that, the other thing. No problem. I can inspect them. So I went for it. And, you know, the moment I took the first little class online, I, I was absolutely hooked. And I, I went all in, all in. I bought it. I went for it. I went to the school, took all the training. I was like, every time there was a new test or a new task, I was like on it. I was like, I'm, I got to get out of this job. Right. You know, I was that determined and, uh, I did it as fast as I could. I graduated out of that. Um, while I was taking the last part of that training, I opened my business. I started the business name, got the insurance, had everything set, ready to go. While I was in the final class, um, before taking the final exam of that class, I got a call about my first inspection and it, I went and did my first inspection three days after I got home from, from Florida and, uh, I've been running ever since, but I, I realized very shortly that, um, that I needed more than just being an inspector. And so, um, I knew at that point that I needed to open it up to being a technician as well. Um, and while I had, you know, so many years of technical experience, I didn't have the experience specifically in RV world. There is a difference. Um, I'm good at fixing stuff, but, you know, troubleshooting a furnace, you need to know, you know, basic operation of how the furnace operates and, you know, troubleshooting and flow and all of that. So I went back and I took all of the training that I could as much as I could. And back then there weren't very many options as far as schools concerned. Um, the one down in Texas didn't even exist, um, at that point. So I had to do it all like piecemeal a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit here, a little bit there until I finally had enough, um, that I could actually go and get certified. Um, so I did that as fast as I could and, you know, started opening myself up to, you know, doing repair work and, you know, it, it's just exploded since, since then. So I've been running inspections and service for going on nine years now. And, and, uh, you know, every time I turn around, my business <laughs> is growing even bigger and bigger. So, um, it's, it's been, it's been phenomenal. Um, and I love what I do even to this day. I'm, you know, I'm tired. I work a lot of hours, but I love every second of it. Yeah, you definitely um, have a passion for it. And that's evident. And um, I just want to kind of let people know that I did go out and I saw Carol last summer and I spent some time with her and it wasn't nearly enough. I mean, I was there a week and I could have spent the whole summer with you. And as soon as I get back east, I'm going to come and see you again because I still am not as comfortable in tech as I am in inspections. And I think that it's really good to have that mentorship and to have other women in the field that you can talk to and spend time with and, and feel comfortable saying, hey, I'm not really comfortable doing this or that. Because it's hard to do that yeah. with not all men, but some of the guys, you feel a little bit 
may be intimidated sometimes with talking and asking questions because you want to feel mm -hmm. secure. You want to feel like you know what you're doing all the time. And so it's nice to have a female mentor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's really huge. Um, you know, when you, when you kind of develop your skills sort of like I did when there wasn't other women, um, that were, um, very experienced in, in automotive or construction. And, you know, you, you don't have a peer to lean on. I'll tell you, it's, it's, it's very difficult. And because of that, um, and because of, you know, the time, you know, the, the difference in archaicness, I guess, from, you know, 30 some years ago to what it is today, even though, as I said, it's, it's still, you know, there's still a lot of, uh, stigma to it. Um, but back then, you know, the, the amount of ridicule and the amount of harassment that I had to kind of just suck up and absorb, um, because I was determined to succeed. I was determined to prove that I was just as good, if not better than any of them. Um, I had to work harder. I had to work smarter. I had to work more. Um, you know, so it's, uh, it's incredibly tough to do it that way and not have the support. And I am probably the biggest cheerleader of, of any woman wanting to get into a male dominated role because gosh, I would have loved to have somebody like myself back then that I could call and, and just have a candid conversation with and, and know what I was going through and relate to, to it all. And, um, you know, even, you know, I've been, I've been married to my husband 28 years, we've been together 30. And so even then, you know, I would come home and I would have somebody to talk to but even my husband can't relate mm -hmm. to what I deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. He just, he can't grasp it. And, and he's, you know, the love of my life. But in, and so, you know, it's, it's, it's hard. So uh, any woman getting into a male field, whether it's RV repair or anything else, um, find somebody who, who will help who will just be an ear, even if it's on the phone, even if it's, you know, through email, even my goodness, you know, it's, it's not very personal that way, but you know, if you're on different time zones, maybe that's the only way you can chat, but you know, find the support group. There are, there are support groups, you know, on Facebook that, you know, would love to see them more developed, but there are support groups specifically for women, RV, uh, techs, and, um, it, it's not the same bashing that you get when you post a question out in general technician, Facebook land. And, Absolutely. Um, you know, I, I just, yeah, I, we don't need that. It's hard enough, um, mm -hmm. physically, emotionally, um, our energy is different than a man. Um, and so we often, you know, get tired a little bit quicker or, you know, our hormones are different. And so, you know, we have days that we might be a little off or, or, uh, you know, that sort of thing. And when you get a little older, like me, you might have, you know, you might get a little hotter at times yeah, than, hot than you normally would. <laughs> exactly. And so, you know, having somebody who can relate to all of that. Yeah. Um, it is hugely Absolutely. important. Yeah. And um, let's talk too about, um, I know some of the women deal with lack of uh, strength and the difference between the grip mm -hmm. strength and just sheer strength. What type of tools and how do you handle that out there? Right. So, I, I mean, if you ask a guy technician how they get an air conditioner up onto the roof, sometimes you'll hear them say, oh, I just put it on my back and carry it up a ladder. Yeah, that's dude speak, right? That's that's their pride, whatever. They may do that, and that's fine with 
with me if that's how you want to do it. And, you know, then when you're complaining tomorrow that you're sore or whatever, you know, good on you. Okay. I refuse to do that. Right. So, um, it's all about working smarter and sometimes we have to invest in special tooling, um, to help us. So of course, you know, I bought the air conditioner lift. And so that helps me get heavy stuff up onto the roof. Um, I've learned how to do, you know, different types of rigging with pulleys and stuff. If I need a little bit more mechanical advantage, I've made and built, um, bars that I can slip over the ends of my ratchet to give me leverage. So Ooh, instead nice. of trying to pull on a six inch or a 12 inch ratchet handle, if I need a little bit more umph, I can put, you know, an 18 inch bar or a 36 inch bar, or I've even got a 48 inch bar back here for when I got something that's really stubborn. Um, and so I use mechanical advantage uh, to help me with tasks that otherwise I wouldn't be able to do. I found a pipe wrench in a store one time because I have to take off exhaust systems when I do hydronic heating replacements. And I was having trouble getting the exhaust pipes off and they, they're threaded iron pipe. And so over time they get very rusted and corroded. And so they're very difficult to separate. And I kept telling my husband, you know, how much I was struggling to, to get those pipes off, but I refuse to keep, you know, to borrow my husband or another guy for a day just to help me out to take an exhaust pipe out. And I'm certainly not going to ask the customer to do it. <laughs> so how do I do it? How do I effectively replace that heater? if I can't get an exhaust pipe off. So I went out and I bought myself a three foot pipe wrench, three feet long. Wow. And guess what? It does what I need it to do. I can get that pipe off. That's great. So you need to develop um, tools for all of us women. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's important to kind of think about that and figure out ways how you can help yourself do stuff because you're not always going to have the strength to do something. Um, we're just built differently. Um, likewise, a pair of pliers in a woman's hand is going to feel differently than a pair of pliers in a man's hand. Um, and so it's really important that you don't just go to the store and buy, you know, the first pair of pliers that are on the shelf, because if you're going to be holding that and manipulating it and doing a lot of you know, um, constant movement with that, it's going to burn calluses and whatnot into your hand, maybe in the wrong position. Um, and so, you know, that can really, really cause a lot of pain. It can cause carpal tunnel and, and all of that sort of stuff. So you need to make sure that when you go into the store, if, say you need a pair of pliers for something and you don't have one, um, you need to go in, you need to feel them in your hand and maybe go to a couple of different stores to test out the different brands. Um, cheaper is not always better uh, mm -hmm. because they're, they're usually very generically made. The more expensive you go, they tend to have more custom grips and more padding and, and whatnot. Um, mm -hmm. And so you need to make sure that you get something that's going to feel good in your hand. I've got right. a pair of pliers that I literally keep in my pant pocket all of the time because it fits me that well. And it's, it's a tiny pair of pliers. I mean, it's only like this big, but I use it for everything yeah. because it's quick to grab out of my pant and it fits so well in my hand. Right. That's always my go-to. So the same thing so with like screwdriver right tools, handles. Important. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I thought about, um, because I think one of the things that might stop some women from getting in the business, because I know this was one of my thoughts when I was going into inspection school was that I didn't really have a background in how to use tools. I didn't understand all the tools and what the options were for taking things off like different bolts and things. And so I mm -hmm. thought, well, why don't I go through and do a weekly tool video where I just talk about how to use a certain tool and um, or ways that maybe the tool can be effective with certain jobs and how you can have um, like a longer lever arm for this type of tool so that you can have the strength to get this bolt off, you know, having videos to teach women. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of 
even if you if you think of a lot of the solo RVers out there, and a lot of them are women, and they might want to be able to do something simple, but they're a little older and they're from a generation where they they maybe had a husband that did all this. They don't even know how to really use a, a drill or anything, but teaching women mm-hmm. how to feel more independent and in using tools, I think would be really yeah. good benefit. Oh, absolutely. Because the, the more comfortable you you are about um, the different methods of fastening or, or, you know, you know, just the different mechanics of removing items, how to take different types of, uh, you know, access panels off and the different tools that are available to help you do that. Um, you know, I did a lot of interior work when I worked in the dealerships back in the day. And for me, it's nothing to take a door panel off, but I know, um, I asked my husband one time to take a door panel off the front of a, his truck so that I could replace a window regulator on it. And he's like, what? Like, how, how do you even start with something like that? And, you know, so I had to, you know, you have to walk them through, you know, and, and, and I just get in there and I just rip it apart and, you know, it's, I got it out in, you know, a few seconds or whatever, but, you know, if you're not familiar with the tools that are available to help you do certain tasks, it's going to make that task a lot harder. Power tools versus uh, regular mechanical tools, you know, there's a huge difference and that will affect your speed um, and the amount of power that you have to tighten something, et cetera, et cetera. So I think that would be huge too, um, is, is to help people get more comfortable with tools in general. Right. Um, and even I, if you, you, know, when you start out, in, I was going to say, when you start out in this uh, field too, I know that for instance, you know, I went full force into inspections and I, I'm really, I love my inspections, but the tech work is like kind of a slow growth for me. So you can start Mm -hmm. off just doing smaller jobs. And then as you get more comfortable, you can take on more, more types of, of work. Like for instance, if I, like, I don't personally do slides and awnings, but maybe over a period of time, I might decide that I am comfortable doing that with more experience. Mm -hmm. Um, Also, you have to take into consideration, are you a full-time RVer like I am and I can't carry a lot of tools with me? Or are you a stationary person like you where you're in one location, you can have as many tools as you want? Right, right. So that, you know, that's a benefit for me. You know, I I have a large service truck that's fully loaded. with parts and tools. And I have a three bay car garage, uh, that's full, full of additional equipment, like lifting stuff. I've got, you know, 20 some different ladders. I've got scaffolding. Um, I've got jacks for when I do different slides and I've got varying heights of jacks for, you know, uh, class A motorhomes versus like the bedroom slide on a fifth wheel, the difference in height. So, you know, obviously you can't use a little bottle jack on a, on a slide that's, you know, way up in the air, um, without having something else between it and ground. Um, so, you know, I, I'm blessed that, that I have that or blessed in the fact that that's how I developed my business. Right. Um, if I wanted to travel full time, I wouldn't be able to have any of that. Um, I'd only be able to carry, you know, a small amount of stuff in either cargo holds or the vehicle in which I was towing or towing with. And so that would, that would put a little bit of a limitation as to what I would be able to do in the field. Um, but that's the beauty of it is you own your own business and you can develop it the way that you want it to be. Um, when I decided that I wanted to be back in the tech world and start my own company and, and actually be a technician, um, I made the decision that I wanted to be as good as, if not better than my male counterparts surprise. So (laughs) I decided that I would be able to run the same amount of work or more than what the other mobile technicians do in this area. I became the only certified aqua hot technician in the state of Pennsylvania. Wow. So, um, 
I went after things that no other mobile technician in the region was doing because I needed to carve my, my niche. And I love diesel. So you anyway. have to be so, a person that's kind of a go-getter and not be afraid to get out there and just try correct, it. Correct. Correct. You need to try it. Yeah. But you don't have to say, okay, I'm going to do everything now. I'm going to be an RV tech and I'm going to do everything because you still need to be able, at the end of the day, you need to be able to do the repair and you need to be confident that you can do the repair. And when you get out of school, you don't necessarily feel that way, right? Because you're like, oh, now I'm out in the real world. Can I really do this? And you start doubt, self-doubt comes in, right? And that's true mm -hmm. whether you're male, female or whatever, but it's especially true when you're a female because there is that stigma still that, you know, can a woman actually be as good as a male in this industry? And right. I just, you know, I decided that I was going to be one of the ones that can say, oh yeah, you can. Because oh, yeah. if I can, anyone can. It's yeah. just, it takes time. It takes time. And you need to have, yes. you know, again, the support. You need to um, support and continuing education and the continual doing and doing and doing and doing. And yep. the more repetitive that you get at something, um, like if you have a fear of electricity, you'll get over that fear the more you push yourself to kind of start testing. Um, and, you know, if, if you're forthcoming with somebody and, you know, you get a call out to a job site and you're there to say do a roof seal because that's, you know, one of the first things that you can do and you're confident in doing, and they ask you about an electrical problem, it's okay to say, well, you know, that's not really my area of expertise, but I'll certainly take a look at it for you. Mm -hmm. And if you say it like that, it doesn't come across that, you know, you're just, you, you don't know anything. It's just, mm -hmm. you, you tell them flat out, that's not particularly your area of experience, but you're happy mm -hmm. to look at it for them to see if you can fig figure out what's going right. on. They're, they'll right. be inclined to be welcoming to that, right? So yeah. there are ways that you can yeah. word your sentences and come across as a confident RV technician, even though you may know nothing about the subject or have never touched it before other than in tech mm -hmm. school. Right. So do you have any like, advice for any women that are thinking about going into this field that you would like to share? Do it. Just do it. Do it. Just do it because yep. first off, we need more women in male dominated fields. Um, secondly, um, it's not as hard as you think. Most of the hardness comes from your inner self. Mm -hmm. um, True. I have, you know, I, <laughs> I have experienced a lot of self-doubt in my life. And if I listened to that voice, I wouldn't be here. Right. Um, I have, I've been beaten down. I've been ridiculed. I've been tortured in, in the, in, in the automotive industry. Like you couldn't even imagine. Um, if I let it, if I let it get to me and if I listened to them and I let them win, I wouldn't be here. And, Sometimes you have to, um, if you encounter a situation where somebody is doing that to you or, you know, um, making you feel like you doubt yourself, you need to push through it and realize, yes, you can. I can. I've been trained to do this. I have a right to be here. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm valuable. That's right. Absolutely. Well, you're such an inspiration and I'm so glad that we were able to have this talk and I hope that a lot of women get a uh, benefit out of watching this today. Um, if people, anyone wanted to get a hold of you and your area, cause you're in Pennsylvania, um, how could they reach you? Uh, so they can reach me uh, 
my email address is carol at rvinspectionspecialists.com. The word specialist is plural. My contact information is also, also on my website, which is www.rvinspectionspecialist.com. Um, and feel free to, there's a contact uh, page on there. Feel free to reach out to me or send me an email. Um, there's a phone number on there, but, um, you know, phone calls are probably a little bit more limiting than, uh, than, than the contact page or email. So feel free to reach out to me if you're thinking about getting into the industry or if you're in the industry and, uh, you need support and you need help, uh, definitely reach out. I can, um, try to help you out through a, a, a challenge or a problem and join some of the lady RV yes. technician yes. sites too, so that we can, we can help you out there in an, in an open forum where there's more than just one lady RV technician, you know, putting out advice. Right. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Carol. And I appreciate you being here and I hope everybody enjoyed this video. Please like, and subscribe, and I will see you on the next one.